Welcome back to the second part of Cluedo. We're trying once again to unravel the mystery of a murder at Arlington Grange. I don't know how you're doing at home, but we're not doing terribly well with our guest detectives. We have worked out, though, by sort of default, really, from Gabby Rosen and Frank Boff's team, that the deed can't have been done in the drawing room. It wasn't done with a candlestick, and it wasn't done by Miss Scarlet. Now, that's all we know Don't so well. far. We get a chance to interrogate these suspects a little more a little later on. But first of all, some fresh evidence has arrived. The details of what happened at Arlington Grange that afternoon. Now, we begin in the library with some bad news for Colonel Mustard. I'm afraid uh, I'm not going to take you on board. But you told me. I said I would do whatever I could. You led me to understand that board approval was just a formality. I'm sorry, there must have been some misunderstanding there. It certainly wasn't on my side. Come, come, I'm sure I never made any such categorical assurance. Listen to me, you moron. I know what you said. And if you think you can get away with leading me on like this, you've got another thing coming. I promise you. If you mean what I take you to mean, don't you think I deserve an explanation? I needed the money. I owed a lot of money, so I did something. He's found out, and if he tells my darling stepmother, She'll write me out of the will. There's nothing I'd like better than to see the fellow fall under a bus. Although when it actually comes to giving him the push. If you don't, I will. The tea will be in the library in five minutes. Right. Thanks. So, that's some fresh evidence. Now, your chance once again to interrogate these six suspects, including Miss Scarlett, although we know she's innocent. Gabby Frank. Well, I want to go uh, with Colonel Mustard because, in fact, he has been seen uh, clearly threatening the victim with a poker in the library, so he must be a prime suspect. Um, I, I want to come back to your conversation with Miss Scarlett when she said, uh, if I loved you, you'd get rid of him. Who did she mean? Who did she want you to get rid of? She wanted me to get rid of Biddle because she told me that she had pawned a bronze statue that she'd taken what? from the grave what? and replaced it with a fake one. <laughs> Biddle knew about it and Miss Scarlet was frightened she would tell Mrs Peacock. Michael, well, that was completely unnecessary. Vivienne. Gabby and Frank, first of all, where was it done? What was the weapon and who done it? It was done uh, in the library with a poker by... You want to say Colonel Mustard? I do. Colonel Mustard. Just tell me why, then. <laughs> well, he was disappointed because uh, he hadn't got on the board. He'd obviously been trying to grease the palm of this man. He, he quite clearly is a pretty unsavoury character, if you ask me. <laughs> and uh, his ambition thwarted. He simply had to do something about it. And uh, for some reason, Miss Scarlett also wanted rid of Mr Biddle. So two of them wanted rid of Mr Biddle. And I believe that uh, Colonel Mustard was the instrument which achieved that end. Well, you, you said it was a poker. <laughs> <laughs> with the poker. Frank, you know you were completely wrong with drawing room candlestick and Miss Scarlet. Uh, and I'm again. You're completely wrong. Completely wrong. <laughs> poker <laughs> and Colonel Mustard. Didn't I make it sound convincing? You, you convinced me. Unfortunately, it's, okay. it's not accurate at all. All three of those are wrong. Right, right, now, Pamela and George, you can return to any of the suspects, including Miss Scarlet. Ask them one question. After that, I must have an immediate yeah, reduction of Mustard. where, what it was done with, and who done it. Right. Ta -da. Well, Colonel Mustard, yeah. you said you'd put a lot of work Mr Biddle's way. Well, I had, yes. Why? How had how, that come about? Well, he owned this insurance company. Yes, and I know that. told a lot of my friends, and a lot of my friends had bought policies with the company, and I expected a seat on the board. Oh. He promised me a seat on the board, and he reneged on his promise. Of course, he was only a sergeant. <laughs> Where, what, What's and who done it? It was done to study. in the study. With, I would say, hang on, with the candlestick. With right? the candlestick. Now that's been eliminated. I know, already. I know, that's why I'm doing yeah. it. Yeah. Something very clever you're doing, but you can share it with, with us. With the candlestick. <laughs> by Colonel Mustard. Well, basically, they're all wrong. <laughs> you get your way, not over there. That's all right. right. <laughs> <laughs> you know who it is now. Yes, Hammer yes. Armstrong yes. says, We know who we. it is now. OK, yeah. right. Frank Gabby, you can ask a question. I'm going to pick on the Reverend again. What, do you know what Mr Biddle wanted to talk to you about? Being a vicar, a lot of people want to talk to me <laughs> about, you know, spiritual problems. 
I don't <laughs> But uh, I, no, he never spoke to me. I regret to say, maybe I could have helped him. <laughs> right, what have you come up with? Well, we, uh, we, we are now having eliminated uh, Miss Scarlet and Colonel Mustard. Uh, check them. We have done that, have we not? Mm -hmm. um, we, we think it is the Reverend Green. I, I hate to say that uh, of a man of the cloth, but uh, his explanation so far has been very unconvincing. He looks exceedingly shifty to me. <laughs> and uh, right. I think he may well have done it with the kettle flex in, in the, the kitchen. kitchen. So you're saying it was done in the kitchen with the in kettle the kitchen, flex, and you're saying flex. it was the Reverend Green Reverend because Green. he looks shifty. <laughs> have you got any slightly more? Well, he hasn't. He's <laughs> dodged the question that we've asked him. He was worried. Dodged. He was absolutely terrified to talk to him, and he didn't want to talk to him. Who didn't want to talk you to him? You didn't want to talk to him. You said, yes, in five minutes, I'm going to put the tray down. That's that's. It was carrying a tray for. God. Oh. Oh. You were... <laughs> Goodness <laughs> sake. Well, Gabby Frank, I have to tell you, you are absolutely correct. It was done in the kitchen with the kettleplex, oh. and it was the Reverend. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I knew I'd been found out. The candlesticks that I had reported stolen and the burglary had in fact been lent to me by Mrs. Peacock and I'd returned a month before. After the burglary, some devil got the hold of me and uh, I included them in the claim. Uh, the insurance money came in very handy. I didn't think it was a terribly desperate thing to do, but I knew that if it'll expose me, I'd lose my living at the very least, so I followed him back into the kitchen and I suppose it was the thought of the shame. I have genuinely tried to do God's work, but but I just never had the strength. I've never been able to understand quite why God didn't give me enough strength to be good. <laughs> So it was the Reverend Green who committed the murder at the Grange with the kettle flex in the kitchen. I'm sorry for the other five of you, innocent ones, you can leave this room. Only the Reverend Green must remain for a very, very, very long time. Hope you got on well with all the various clues tonight at home. Commiserations to Pam and George. Congratulations to the very sprightly Gabby and Frank Bob. And that's all from us. We'll see you next week for more Murder Mystery at the Grange on Cluedo. Good night. <laughs>